Dar es Salaam is watching. When we say that we're East Africa's 24-hour news channel, we'll literally mean it. Thank you so much for staying with We Can Express at this hour. We want to dive into a one very important conversation, cleft lips and palate's um, uh, surgery, rather. And you're going to get to hear two amazing stories from two amazing Kenyans. Um, but allow me to introduce, first of all, my panel this morning. Sit closer to me. I have Dr. Meshak Onguti. He is a surgeon and a cleft lips and palate specialist. Sit closer to me is, I think, someone who I've not... Mudoni. Mudoni has such an amazing name. She's called um, Chalmis Mudoni. And on my far end, I have Stephen Onyango. Guys, thank you so much for being here, both all three of you. It's great to have you here. So, Dr. Meshak, let's begin, perhaps, with even explaining to our audience what a cleft lip is. Thank you very much. It simply means that a cleft lip is a person when a child is born, mm -hmm. and the, the parents are at birth. Mm -hmm where you find that uh, uh, the lips have not come together. Mm -hmm. In this case, we call it a cleft lip. And what it does, it affects the structures that are close by the nose and the mouth. Mm -hmm. And also, in the palate, the two halves don't join together. Mm -hmm. And uh, which means that uh, normally, uh, the mouth com com uh, communicates directly to the nose, to the ears, because it's open. Mm -hmm. Air goes in there and causes those, those effects up. Uh, the main problems with this that they affect the most vital functions or what the, the, what the body does. And one of those is eating. So one of the things that these people face at that particular moment is that they can't be able to eat properly or it's very difficult to feed them. In fact, the parents or the, uh, whoever is taking care of those children in the hospital becomes very difficult so that we have sometimes have to use the tubes to feed them or sometimes have to use special uh, gadgets that they can be able to feed. Mm -hmm. And when a child doesn't feed well, that means that they can't grow well. Mm -hmm. The other thing is infections because of the openness that is there. They actually get very frequent infections of the nose, mm -hmm. of the, I mean, the ears, of the mouth, and as a result, uh, many of them, if they are very severe, they actually don't survive because of that. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect is uh, in terms of uh, deafness, because when the hair goes through the mouth, it affects the uh, the tubes that go to the, that come from the ears, right. and therefore they swell up, and of course, cause, 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 cause a lot of women, they cause to the become deaf, or they don't hear well properly. Mm -hmm. And the other one is speech, because you see, it's through the mouth that you're able to speak, that we're able to communicate, mm -hmm. and that of course. And the last one is the appearance, mm -hmm. because most people have identified for how they look and how they, their faces are. Mm -hmm. So that's why these conditions are really very significant, because they do affect the social integration of a person to the society mm -hmm. in terms of work, in terms of school, in terms of eating, in terms of uh, socializing, and many other things. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, in similar terms, what curves mean. But I just, and to clarify it, one is born with it. One cannot acquire it. Uh, no, no. It, 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 this is a congenital, they call it congenital. And uh, the, the only thing is that you see, although it, they are born with it, it, is, it, simply, it doesn't mean that uh, this is a devastating effect. Right. And unfortunately, uh, by being born with it, most people don't get the service they need, particularly even those who have got insurance, it's because insurance is considered as, as a, a congenital effect, which to me is a very bad effect, because how do you condemn a child who has been born at, at birth? that you can't get this kind of treatment mm -hmm. because it's a congenital thing. And yet that treatment of that particular uh, condition will, will change the person's life or life mm -hmm. so that it can be more useful in the society and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it is not acquired, it is inherent. You mean you are born with it. Okay. Yes. Dr. Meshak, the numbers perhaps, uh, if you could share with us statistics yes, in Kenya, in East Africa? Yeah. Actually, what's, if we look in Africa, where we've been to a lot of places, uh, we have really never done what we call a proper study to know what they are. But from what we are able to see, we're seeing that for every 700 live births, there's at least one case mm -hmm. of a cleft lip or cleft palate. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that uh, because we go to a place sometimes, and when we're there, we find that a child is born with a, a cleft when we're seeing that particular place. One in every 700? 700, yeah. live part, yes. Okay. Uh, in, uh, in, in the other places, it could be higher, maybe one in 400. In some places, it could be lower, maybe mm -hmm. one in 1,000. But this depends on the environment, what, I mean, which I know you want to ask about what causes these this kind of things, because mm -hmm. uh, one of the major problems that we are fa finding out that if we knew the cause, we would prevent it. Mm. But those ones that are easily associated are mainly, uh, there are some essential uh, foods, like 
vitamin A, folic acid, that normally help the cells to develop properly, particularly in the earlier stage. If these things lack, uh, you, you can end up having this congenital formulas, not only the, 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 the mouth or uh, only, but in the heart, the hands, the feet, for example, uh, the abdomen, where you have hernias and everything else, all these things are closely associated when the child is born with them. So, so the other thing is, is pollution. You know, pollution. You know, what's happening if you look at the smoking that comes in the vehicles and the roads and everything else, alcohol and smoking. I know there's a rule that says that look, people don't smoke in the public, but I do still see that even in, in restaurants, people are just, they, 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 they actually smoke within that and say this is a smoking area. Mm -hmm. So everybody's smoking on that. Mm -hmm. And particular ladies who go there and they are pregnant, they are in stages of pregnancy when they don't know that. Uh -huh. It does have, it does contribute significantly to, to the effects of this particular thing. Yes. Right. Yes. But it's not a life sentence. You know, aspect. one of the things that, and that's why you know, I feel so excited that you have this uh, yeah. two uh, lady and gentlemen here, yeah. that look, this, this, is not a, this is not a, this is not a condemned mm. disease. It mm. doesn't, in fact, it doesn't alter the intelligence of these mm. things. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if that was the case, then you wouldn't have Alex and Yango here, all Chelemis, yeah. who have gone through the university yeah. and actually uh, are contributing to society, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it is not a life threatening condition. It is something that can be fixed very nicely. The only thing that they had challenges because it's not it's not done everywhere. Mm. It requires specialized resources. Mm. It requires a commitment in mm. various things on, and it was a port. Yeah. You know, where everybody participates. Okay, Modoni yeah. and Yonyango, thank you so much for being here this morning and choosing to share your story. I'll begin with you, Modoni. When? How long ago did you have your surgery? Uh, I've had. For surgery so far. Mm -hmm. ah, sorry, five. Five. Yes. Okay. The first one was when I was nine months old. Yeah. And then from there, uh, one year later, mm -hmm. then three years later, mm -hmm. then uh, another one when I was 18, mm -hmm. and then the fifth one just about a month ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, are the surgeries normally painful? Uh, well, it's a wound afterwards, yeah. Yeah. so uh, the first few days. days or one week or two are yeah. a bit uh, hectic, yeah. but as you can see, I'm very healed right now and I'm doing well. Yeah. I can eat and talk yeah. very well. Yeah. Yes. Banyango, what about you? How long ago um, did you get your surgery and have you had multiple surgeries like Mudoni as well? Okay. Mine? Uh, not all that much. The first one, mm -hmm. when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, one year. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, since I'm um, coming from non remote area, I come from Mumbai. Yeah. So my parents were not able to understand that Sunday I'm on and when I'm on it. Yeah. So when I was done on the first one, they live. Yeah. Then, when I came to the enemy, mm -hmm. like here, yeah. uh, yeah, uh -huh. I was taking the oath uh -huh. in uh, an alien mm -hmm. So, one of the Indians applied to me and told me, my plan, meet you in the enemy and the Okay. Then, that when I met Dr. Mesha. Dr. Mesha. Okay. So, from there, I think my life is now in the yeah. own. Even uh, when I call my mom, my mom, you know, tell me, hey, how do you know, Nani? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had another surgery since then? <coughs> I... It's about a month ago. I am... It's a I month am, ago. Yeah. I am now. Ah. Uh, yeah. So your mom was so happy and she was so excited yeah, when yeah. you talked to her on the phone. She would me. She would now hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Meshak, take me through um, and help even our audience understand the different levels of surgery. Well, I actually thought surgery is only done once, but from your story, it, it has different stages and different multiple steps. And I think I've noticed, even from um, Mozoni and, and Onyango, they had their first words at least when they were one year old. So, um, how many times does one have to have surgery? Uh, ideally, 
ideally, we are supposed to reduce the number of surgeries as has been done. Okay. One of the reasons why uh, they do multiple surgeries, in fact, there was a time they used to be even up to 20, not only here, but even in developed countries. Uh, and the reason is that uh, repairing clefts, because we have to restore the function that we have talked about before, the speech, the eating, and everything else, it must be done very accurately. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, most of these patients, you know, people do their surgeries, but they are not really, really experts on it. And therefore, when they do it, they, you have what we call secondary uh, deformities mm. or effects. That you have done it, yes, like in their case, what happened, they were done. But, you, you know, the facial appearances and the speech was not, it was not so good. Mm -hmm. So, which means that, you see, when you look someone, you will look at them, you will think that these people have a problem. Mm -hmm. that, that, that I'm sure that came, it, it's going to improve. Mm -hmm. Because what happened when that was open like that, then the, the, the nostrils mm -hmm. get enlarged mm -hmm. and block. Mm -hmm. And so the air flow mm -hmm. doesn't come on right. But I mean, this time it was, but it's going to improve tremendously. Mm -hmm. so, so, so basically what's happening is that the, the, the intentions now is to make sure that we do these surgeries. Uh, properly the first ones. If you do the palate, you do it properly at that particular moment. You, so even if you have to do, you do one or two S surgeries. surgeries. If they're done by the right person yes, and the properly. right way, yeah, one or two it, maximum. Yeah, yeah. Because this is, this, is, this is a very high risk. It's like heart surgery, right. where nobody can just be doing it anywhere now. Right. Uh, but you see, what has happened in the past, because there was a chance to take care of these people, and they, they did to at least ensure that they do something that aside. And you know, our, our patients are very good. Mm -hmm. They always thank you mm -hmm. on whatever you've done, whether it's bad or not. And even after the surgery, yes. perhaps do they also get um, speech training as well? Right now, that's what you're actually trying to do. Because what's happened, you know, like them, when you stay for a long period of time not talking properly, right. you have not been able to learn certain cells. And remember, you learn this at a very high stage. I yeah. mean, like nine months, that's when the child starts learning how to talk mm -hmm. uh, all the way through. So it's always good uh, to get uh, get them be taken through a series of how to produce sounds mm -hmm. and they will improve. Mm -hmm. You know, in, before they used to be told that if you are an adult, there's no, there's no need to do the palate. Mm -hmm. But I found that the change is more tremendous because mm -hmm. when you treat them, mm -hmm. for the first time, the food will not be leaking to the nostrils. Mm -hmm. They will not be hiding when they are eating. Mm -hmm. They will at least be able to go like they are, they are here in the studio. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. it, to me, this is a real uh, for them. Yeah. You know, our role is to make sure that do we change someone's life? Yeah. Do we add value to it? And mm -hmm. that's, that's what's, what's the significant of the particular aspect. And even that. speaking of adding value, we're going to open our phone lines. Our phone lines are open. At the bottom of your screen, you will see um, different numbers that you can call in. If you want to be part of this conversation, if you have a question as well, if you have a comment, we'd really love for you to be part of this conversation. Or if you don't want to call in, you can always tweet at KTN News at Zinzi underscore K and be part of this conversation. All right. Um, Mzoni, um, so we've had a, a different levels of surgery in yes. your life. Yes. Um, Dr. Meshok mentioned that you and you guys have gone to university. First of all, what did you study? I studied a Bachelor of Science yeah. in Microprocessor Technology yeah. and Instrumentation. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's the and that's all, and you're also doing your masters? I have uh, I intend to. You intend to what do you want to master in? I want to master in embedded systems. Wow. You love sciences. I do. Ah, okay. All right. So take me, take me through your childhood while growing up, Mazoni. Uh, um, having grown up with a cleft, was, I'm sure that was not easy. <coughs> it wasn't, especially when I was younger. Yeah. I think it's because children uh, don't understand. really understand. Mm -hmm. And back then, uh, the, aw the awareness wasn't as much as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So even adults would uh, think it's a curse mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, Especially in this African society. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a huge challenge here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so you'll find that in school, getting um, friends, mm -hmm. making friends, uh, getting people to play with was a bit challenging. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. I was mostly a very introverted child, mm -hmm. but as I grew up, I uh, gained confidence, and right now I have uh, quite a strong social circle. Wow. Yes. And the support of your family? My family has given me tremendous support, mm -hmm. yes. My parents uh, took me through uh, therapy when I was younger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speech therapy, they taught me how to articulate myself properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, my speech wasn't that bad, you could uh, hear what I was saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Um, what about you, Nyango? Tell me about your story growing <coughs> up. Okay. Uh, when I, I was young, mm -hmm. when, when school was not very easy, mm -hmm. we all, uh, my fellow human would laugh. The moment you talk, mm -hmm. they laugh. They so laughed. They laughed and they ran away. In so you, school? Yeah. yeah. So you are left alone. So you are wondering, am I talking nonsense or what am I talking? Mm. Mm. So I always be alone. No, I never look me alone, me quiet, even if I'm, I'm in class, yeah, but I alone. don't even have a friend on. Sometimes I might know, but out the top. Yeah. Normally. But, and your parents, did they show you support? I know you said your yeah, mom was so my mom, My mom had been with me yeah. all that time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You always take me there whenever I know. You need a lot more, you know. <laughs> and then, there in the remote area, people don't know a lot, but... I might commend her mm. on that. Mm. Yeah. All right. And do you guys, as as Modoni and Onyango, do you also talk to other children who perhaps are going through the same challenge as you? And I'll begin with you, Modoni. How are you using your life and your story to inspire perhaps other cleft children outside there? And even just create awareness about it. Well, unfortunately, I haven't, apart from when I visit the hospital, mm. I've never met anyone with an untreated cleft. Mm -hmm. And, but I've met a few people who had it treated mm -hmm. and I try to, like today I told people to tune in, tell a friend, share and you see that's raising awareness and every now and then I <coughs> volunteer in hospitals that have these programs so that I can help them because these programs are usually uh, People donate their time and expertise, mm. so it's all about people coming together and volunteering yeah. in any way they can. What about you, Nyango? Okay. Uh, back there at home, mm -hmm. I'm using my social media mm -hmm. to create awareness mm -hmm. of this condition because mm -hmm. uh, I told them this is not a condition that can be repaired. It is not a permanent in a minute. Yeah, you can um, you can let away. Yeah, and you can yeah. be treated. You can be treated. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll return with closing comments from this amazing panel. Hopefully, we'll also get to read some of your feedback. And if you haven't had a chance to call in, no worries. You can still call, call in. Um, but first, let's take a